Hey guys, Dane from Skog and Nikki Part Center here with a tech tip. This week we're going over 58x conversions on a uh, big block of all things. It's a little bit different than our normal routine of LS or Gen 5 LT, uh, but we do have some customers that have asked questions about it, especially after uh, Chevrolet Performance released the ZZ632, which was an absolute monster, 1,000 horsepower, and it had EFI running a Terminator. So you guys that are out there wondering, well, I want EFI too, how can I make that happen? There's a variety of ways, actually. Uh, the guys in our race shop, uh, they employ kind of a different aspect than what we are gonna cover here, but I'll talk about that as I go through these components. Uh, and really just kind of addressing a few things so that you know what to look for and what to look out for as well whenever you're selecting all of your components to be able to do your conversion on your own personal big block. Uh, and so really, we'll start off. This is actually a full kit from Chevrolet Performance. It comes with a timing cover, uh, your sensors, fasteners, a double, ro uh, double roller timing chain. You have your crank sprocket a camshaft sprocket, which is neat, as well as a 58X crankshaft reluctor wheel. Uh, so you guys that are familiar with this, this is gonna be off of a Gen 4 style uh, architecture for your LS engines. So you have your 58X uh, crankshaft reluctor and your 4X camshaft uh, signal. So this one, instead of taking the whole engine apart and then having to put it on the back end of your crankshaft, like what you would do for say a Gen 4 uh, LS system, or if you had watched a video before about us talking about converting your Gen 3 LS into a Gen 4 LS, uh, the 58X reluctor is gonna be the important part. This one actually goes on the snout of your crankshaft, which is actually kind of a novel idea. So there's a few things that had to be able to, had to be changed really to make this uh, something that works. So going over this reluctor, of course, you're going to install this on an existing engine and there's going to be a few things that need to be moved or modified. So part of that is going to be your uh, balancer. So in the instructions for the ZZ632, it talks about this system, which Chevrolet Performance uses on that engine. Uh, this is going to be where you need it around three millimeters shaved off of the back of your existing uh, balancer that you have just to you know, give a little bit of clearance for this. That way you have your balancer all the way in and it's all in perfect alignment. And you're not also trying to push this thing into the rest of your, your components, uh, including your, uh, your crankshaft gear, as well as everything else behind it. So uh, some of the changes with that, you're going to see you have this timing cover, which is actually a really neat little piece because if you look at the regular uh, timing cover that you would have on the Chevrolet Performance Big Blocks, they look relatively similar. Uh, there's a lot of the, the casting that's very, very much the same, but you can't just like drill a hole in this and then you know try to slap a sensor into it. There's a few clearancing uh, things that they've done across the backside of this, as well as some reinforcements in the casting. So, of course, you have on this one, you'll notice that this doesn't have a hole for the uh, camshaft sensor. Uh, also, down at the bottom, this one does, uh, surprisingly, it has a little bung for it, but uh, it's going to be for your uh, crankshaft position sensor, which goes down in here. So really, at first blush, they look relatively the same, but there's going to be some other differences across the back. Uh, also, the other thing is, remember, these are O-ringed, so you don't have an additional gasket that you're going to have to deal with or anything else like that. But the, uh, the bottom side of this, this will probably be easier to show you. We'll get a close-up of it here in a second. But at the bottom of this, this is all one giant lip, whereas on the uh, conversion timing cover, it's actually been machined, and there's a recess here. So that recess allows this crankshaft reluctor to be able to go down right in here. You have plenty of clearance for it. 
That way it lines up with the crank. <clears throat> and then there is another spot that is discussed in the instructions that you might have to do a little bit of clearancing on the lower skirt of the block on either side just to give this reluctor some room. So you'll see on this one, uh, the way that it's cast right here, so it's gonna be this section of the block, you'll need to look at it and make sure, and just pay attention just overall, be aware of the surroundings of everything else that's gonna be moving, just like whenever you have to notch out the skirt of the block whenever you're doing a stroker kit or anything else like that. Also the pan sometimes. But this one right here, uh, you have it fully cast on that edge. And then on this one, for the conversion kit, it's actually been clearanced. You have a little notch there that's been uh, cleared out, so that way your reluctor wheel can uh, do the work and send the signals that you need to be able to make this beautiful thing happen, the wonderful magic of EFI. Uh, so for you guys that are interested also, uh, this since this is a double roller timing chain, which is kind of neat, because uh, you know most of us are in the LS stuff, we usually end up just doing single roller. But on the back end, uh, this is the way that they made the signal work. So you have your notches here to be able to give your nodes and everything for the, uh, the camshaft position sensor. So that's actually pretty neat. Nice little novel, uh, novel way of making all of this work. Uh, the guys at Chevrolet Performance put in a lot of uh, hard work on that and uh, it's, it's a, a neat little setup. So going around with this, uh, so you guys are probably wondering, well, we've got that part, where's the rest of it as far as doing uh, fuel injection? Well, you guys can use your screwdrivers instead of you know tuning your carburetor, you can use it for the up arrow whenever you get your laptop out because there's a way of you know tuning and running all this. If you guys are going to be you know a little bit uh, adventurous, and decide that you want to use a OEM style ECU. Uh, there might be a few people out there that have harnesses to be able to make that work. Uh, but really to just kind of make it more of a straightforward and simple effort, uh, you can use something like a Holley Terminator, Terminator X, Dominator, um, anything else along those lines. So these, these are really nice because you can put in the parameters, you don't have any of the OEM nannies, you know, balking at you, not having to deal with any of the other emissions type stuff because I mean really you're, you're putting a big block into something or whatever it's it's not really going to be something to uh, consider. So on the relatively straightforward method you can keep your uh, your stock style uh, carburetor intake for your for your intake plenum and then go with something like this which is a TBI uh, system. Uh, so this this Holly setup is really nice because you just you just bolt it on and it's got the flying lead and the harness and everything else that you need to be able to make this work. <clears throat> so that way it works like a regular TBI setup. You can tune it. Uh, they come with screens as well, depending upon the way that you have it spec'd out. Uh, and so all of that runs really well because also you can tie it in with your camshaft sensor and the crank sensor and all that stuff uh, for your existing distributor setup. Uh, for something using this, you're not going to need to have the distributor. So you'll, of course, need to block that off and figure out some other options as far as that's concerned. Uh, so I don't have that part in here, but we can also add that in our description in the video down below uh, or in our little bubbles that pop up from time to time. So this is, this is nice. Uh, we've seen this used quite a few times in the past uh, just in, you know, either with customer swaps or from, you know, work that we've done in other shops. Uh, they're nice. They, they look re relatively stock because you put your air cleaner over it and at first blush, nobody's really going to notice. Uh, so it's, it's pretty neat uh, just because of the fact that the way that it's packaged, it makes it straightforward. You don't have to do anything crazy uh, as far as like, you know, cutting into stuff or you know, adding more clearance to the hood or cutting cowls or anything. So for you guys that are wanting to do something a little bit different, maybe you don't want to run a, a, a carb style setup. Maybe you're wanting to do something a little bit different. You can always do a, a, 
uh, different style intake plenum. We have a variety of intakes that we have in, in our inventory or have access to. You guys have probably seen uh, a lot of different ones that we've used uh, through the race shop that's going to be you know on our engine dyno as well as of course uh, which those result in going into race cars. Uh, so whether it be a ramjet style or anything, sometimes they have uh, say for the ZZ632, you have your injectors on the side as well as just a, a carb style uh, intake but with a giant four port throttle body on it. Uh, so you know there's a, a wide variety of ways to be able to take care of your induction for your big block. <clears throat> so really a lot of it comes down to figuring out what you're going to do, Making a plan and understanding what you're going, what the end goal is, as far as the the way that you want it to look, the design, how you want it to work, and then executing it. Uh, we can help you out in a lot of a lot of ways, as far as that is concerned. Uh, you know, of course, some people might get a little bit scared whenever we start talking about big blocks, uh, but this is you know, it's it's something that really a lot of the components relatively the same. So it's just sometimes the dimensions are a little bit bigger. So uh, also the other one that you can do instead of running that you can of course run Terminator X. Uh, this is a Terminator X Max which also allows you to put a 4L60 or 4L70 uh, behind your big block. So I mean if you, there, there's ways of making those work. Uh, you just have to be smart about the tuning. Uh, but also you can do uh, say like this red guy over here this one right here is a dominator this is a lightweight so which is nice and of course you have a lot of other things you can use as far as inputs and outputs for that system uh, you're going to have to that's that's not easy mode for that one because of course you're going to have to do some some wiring work and make sure everything that uh, that works accordingly so uh, that's that's going to be something a little bit more in depth for some of you guys some of you guys are probably up for the challenge. Uh, maybe you're just deciding that you need something just for the weekends to, to just kind of keep yourself uh, happy. So also, the other thing that you're going to have to consider is that because of the fact that you're moving away from a distributor system and going to a uh, coil-driven setup, you're going to need to get coils. Uh, there's ways to mount the coils either to valve covers or you can, you can also do remote locations for those coils. Be smart about the routing. Pay attention to way, the way that you're doing your uh, coil mounts as well as where you're running the wires. You know, these big blocks, they run large large headers and uh, the primaries and everything are, are usually pretty massive, especially compared to the stuff that I'm used to. So uh, pay attention to where you mount the coils because heat is definitely going to be a, a killer. Don't mount those things you know, under the firewall on top of the headers where, you know, it's okay for driving, you know, off and on to the trailer for a car show. But if you want to go to Sonic or do a uh, drag and drive or anything else like that, you want to put them in a, in a spot where they're going to be, you know, happy because that way you're not stuck on the side of the road with an upset wife and kids in the car because you cooked the coils. Uh, meanwhile, they're cooking in the car because it doesn't work. So anyway, that's really just kind of the, the thick and thin of it on, on this setup. Uh, if you guys have got any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, this is a, a really nice setup. I really hope that GM moves towards doing this uh, for Chevrolet Performance, and maybe you know we can start seeing some of this stuff in some of the other big blocks, whether it be the SP502 or some of the other components, uh, just because of the fact that you know adding an EFI component for this, for some of you guys who are more comfortable with uh, tuning, tuning an EFI system using a Terminator or any other, you know, standalone ECU. Uh, whereas, you know, somebody approaches you with a screwdriver and a carburetor and, and you decide to run for the hills. Uh, th there's options out there that you have. So once again, thanks for stopping by. If you guys have got any questions, feel free to comment, uh, shoot us a message, do whatever. Give us a phone call as well. Uh, our tech guys are, are ready and willing to be able to help you out on this as well as helping you spec out uh, a system for for your own uh, swap and uh, really honestly if you guys do this we'd love to see the project uh, tag us on social media because we we love seeing these components being put to use as well as being able to use that to educate everybody else it's like hey this is out there people are using it uh, so once again thanks for stopping by we'll see you guys next time 
for another Ticket Video.